Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into an in-depth ride review of the Honda CB300R. As someone who has been riding the Honda CB300F for a year now, I couldn't wait to experience the 300R. Although the CB300R is a beast of a bike, but my vote is still for CB300F. I'll tell you why in this video. So let's get started. I will not take you through any on paper specifications of any particular bike. Instead, I'll take you through a practical approach to decide which bike to buy. So let's get started. Both of these bikes comes with very minimalistic styling and neither of them is a head turn. There is not much of a road presence with these bikes. For those of you who know me, you know I'm a big fan of these round headlights. Although the styling is a subjective matter, but I still prefer the CB300R looks over the CB300F. Anyway, the moment I swung my leg over the CB300R, I could feel the difference. It feels lighter than the CB300F. I think it's because of the chassis. It all hinted at the thrilling ride ahead. And once I hit the road, wow, the performance of this bike is absolutely exhilarating. <laughs> You feel the power instantly. The CB300R is noticeably faster than CB300F and the performance is creamy. It's buttery smooth. No matter which gear you are in, it pulls really hard. It feels very lively and very responsive. The acceleration is brisk and the bike just begs you to push it harder. Every twist of the throttle brings a smile on your face. You might have seen some drag races where CB300F and CB300R going side by side up to a speed of 100 km per hour. But trust me, the feeling is entirely different. CB300R is a beast. As I always said, it is not about the top speed, it is how quickly and efficiently you are reaching there. And that is where the CB300R stands out, because it does it effortlessly. So if you are a purely performance oriented rider, I'll highly prefer to stick with the 300R over CB300F. Now coming to the comfort of these two bikes, the CB300R comes with a softer suspension setup that offers you a very plush ride. If you compare it to CB300F, stock suspension is very stiff and therefore it feels bouncy and less stable in corners if you compare it to CB300R. Now coming to the seat of these two bikes, both have very minimal foam in it, so it's not ideal for very long rides. You have to do something with the seats or you have to adapt with it, although the CB300F comes with a better pillion seat. So up to this point of time, the CB300R is a clear winner over the CB300F. But wait a while, the CB300F is still my first preference. I'll tell you why. So the point number one is its tank capacity. CB300F comes with a 14 liter tank, whereas CB300R comes with a 9.7 liter tank. And also, if you are pulling hard or you are riding at a high altitude area, the mileage will be dropped significantly. So the range this bike can offer is about 250 km. If you compare it to CB300F, it can go up to 450 km. And when you are on a tour, you really want that longer tank range. My second point is its ground clearance. The ground clearance of CB300R is about 151 to 157 mm, whereas the ground clearance of CB300F is 177 mm. And if you know the roads of India, you know, ground clearance is really important. I've seen FZ and Pulsar to scratch their main stand in every speed breaker of Indian roads. And I have already done quite a few touring with some occasional off-road patches. And trust me, this bike never let me down. There was hardly any instances where the resonator box was scratching on the speed breakers. So yeah, ground clearance is very important if you are taking touring seriously. My point number three is its ergonomics, the rider's triangle. The handlebar of CB300F placed at a higher position, which offers you an upright sitting posture and that takes away all the forces from your wrist and feels like you are in the bike rather on the bike. Whereas in CB300R, you are already in a committed riding position, there isn't any room for the rider to move around. And for this, the wind blast is comparatively lesser if you compare it to CB300R. The fourth point is just my personal preference. You may take it or you may not. And that is, I like oil cool machines. 
because of its less maintenance. Liquid cool machines you have to look for the coolant level every now and then. There might be some problem with the radiator fan, there might be some problem with the coolant level, the coolant quality and that may leads to overheating of the engine. That is not the case with the oil cooled machines. Even in case of a blow by, the oil cooled machines can survive if you regularly top up the engine oil but that cannot be done with the liquid cooled machines. But yeah that comes at a cost of performance and refinement and all. So yeah, you gotta decide if you want that extra bit of performance and refinement to trade with that peace of mind. And point number 5 is very straightforward, the pricing. CV300F comes about 50 to 60 thousand rupees cheaper than CV300R. So with that amount of money, you can buy all your gears for touring, all the necessary accessories that you will require for touring and perhaps you will still end up saving some money for your future tours. Although I really loved riding a CV300R, it's a true successor of the legendary CBR250R. But if I had to pick one for a long distance trip and everyday use, the CB300F would be my go-to because of its more comfortable ergonomics, its practicality and everyday use. Thanks for joining me on this ride review. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, share and subscribe. Also, we have just launched the membership program of EasyMech. You might want to check that out for more engaging contents. Ride safe and see you next time. Peace.